For tonight's meeting agenda, we'll start off as normal with our flag salute. We'll do some announcements. And then I'm going to really quickly run through the meet and greet format that we use because uh, we may have people here that have never been here before, and I think it's important that we understand exactly what we're doing. Then we're going to introduce David Barlavi, um, who is one of our candidates for city council. Dr. Dorio will try to get here. We'll see if he does. And, and he's really championing a, a bill right now that's in Sacramento. And the bill is to protect your ability to have your next of kin determine um, medical uh, decisions for you as opposed to the, uh, the hospital or the medical facility taking that uh, responsibility for you. Excuse me? Yeah, well, uh, it is, except that what happens is they're, they're talking about the situation, and, 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 and he'll talk about it some more, where, you, where a person goes in for an emergency medical procedure and does not have a durable power of attorney or does not have a uh, – and so uh, right now, uh, in many cases, the, the medical facilities are making the determination as to, uh, as to what, um, what should be done. And he believes, and I think he's right, that it should be your next of kin that makes those decisions. Anyway, then we're going to have um, a little discussion about um, our city manager and misinformation that he spreads uh, lately about the Human Relations Roundtable, district voting, and all those other kinds of things, because um, uh, I just couldn't resist. <laughs> Lastly, uh, Doug Fraser, if we, if we can get through to that point, we're going to talk about the final decision on this year's Manufacturing Home Rent Adjustment Panel and the fact that there were some really, really uh, interesting decisions based upon the fact that, that I, I guess Doug's broken the code now and uh, they're uh, siding with him in, in certain cases as well. Then our version of participation, which is the first five people who want to say something, um, and then a next meeting preview, and we'll adjourn promptly at 9 o'clock. Um, normally, before we do the pledge, I, I normally look for someone that, does, that has done something uh, extraordinary. Uh, but this time, uh, well, this was extraordinary as well. It just happened that I was at Ray's 90th birthday uh, last Saturday night. Ray is a, a, a past uh, governor of the Swaz. And um, sitting there, to my surprise, was a gentleman named Bill Aaron. And I hadn't seen Bill in like 10 years. So 15 years ago, when the city of Santa Rita decided, they made the decision that um, they couldn't afford to have committees meet at City Hall because it was too expensive. And um, uh, they kind of kicked us out along with some others. We'll talk about that a little bit more also. Bill Aaron picked up the, the gauntlet, and uh, he went to um, first uh, to the Elk Lodge and then to the Moose to see if, if one of those two organizations would help us out. Um, and the Moose Lodge is the one that did. Now, I, I belong to both, so that wasn't an issue. But, but, but when I saw Bill, and Bill at the time was having a lot of problems with his eyes. He'd had numerous surgeries on his eyes. And it looks like, um, you know, they, they, they've been kind of successful. So when I sat down, I was talking to Bill. All of a sudden, I went, Bill, you realize that was 15 years ago. And, and so every, every month for the last 15 years, except for December when we're dark, we have been given this room to allow us to do this civic activity. So, um, Rick, would you lead us in the flag salute? to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, for announcements, um, I, I left this in. We, we talked about it a little bit last month, but I think it's important. Um, we're finally uh, breaking ground on the Bridge to Home uh, homeless shelter, and I, I'd like to get the new uh, director in here. Uh, we've had um, uh, the uh, pre previous management here, and it's been so long because I've been following them since 2000, when every year they said, next year we'll have enough money to get started. It looks like they're finally getting started. Um, census is going to be taking place. Yes, ma'am. 
Do you know where uh, Waste Management is located? Do you know where Saugus Cafe is? Yes. Okay, so Saugus Cafe, that traffic light right at Saugus Cafe, uh, if you're coming from this direction and you're going down Boquet, you turn left, go across Springbrook, and it's on your left-hand side. Okay. Uh, census is uh, uh, coming back, and uh, tomorrow uh, they're going to be talking about the Wild West. So we'll see uh, what that means. But I, I included the entire list of census uh, block parties. Uh, at Otna today, at the Old Town New Hall Association, um, the um, library is there. Uh, this is basically uh, all four of the library locations and their hours, which are, gosh, this is hard to read here, which is um, 10 to 6 p.m., uh, Monday through Friday, and on Saturday from 10 to, um, to 5. But anyway, they've got a bunch of stuff going. One is their uh, Day of the Libraries for, for us, for children, uh, which is, uh, should uh, be an interesting and, and good event if you have some uh, youngsters. And also, uh, at the same time, they're gonna have a bookmark contest, so if uh, one of those youngsters design a bookmark and everybody loves it, well, they, they get to be the winner. Uh, also, in, the, in downtown New Hall, in the Performing Arts Center, or the Newhall Family Theater, which is off of uh, Main Street, and it w it's in the um, grammar school, right? New Newhall Avenue Elementary School? Yeah, and uh, um, they're going to have a, a, a thing called a celebration of performing arts, and so if, you, if you're interested, uh, give them a call, and you can get tickets for it. And it's a pretty nice theater. I've been there. Uh, one of the things that got mentioned, uh, hi, Dr. Dorio. One of the things that got mentioned is the, uh, the fact that the city now is looking to take over ownership of Hart Park in New Hall. Anybody, are you guys all knew that? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, the, 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 the park is currently in probate. It has been in probate for two years. And this issue is elements of William S. Hart's will and whether or not the city could be considered the legal successor to the county to take over ownership. But we had some, some uh, volunteers from, uh, the, um, from uh, Hart Park, and there's questions of what's gonna happen with the barnyard, what's gonna happen with the museum, and the gift shop. We don't know how much it's gonna cost the city. We don't know how much it's gonna, whether they're gonna have to pay to purchase the land. We don't know if there's gonna be any, uh, well, we know there will be ongoing recurring costs because uh, you gotta maintain it. And we'll have more information about that next month. But one of the things that annoys me most about this is the fact that right now, we pay to maintain that park with property tax. Do you think that the, that the county, if they, give the, if they allow the city to take over that park, do you think they're gonna give you a rebate on your property tax? Not on your life. But we'll have to pay for it again here within the city, uh, city budget. So it, it's, it, I don't think it's a really great idea. The other thing I wanted to talk about just for a second in the um, announcements is our water company and the insanity that's going on there. So here we are. Supposedly, uh, we're, we're looking at a drought again. And, um, and members of the water board um, decided to give us a sneak preview of how they're gonna solve the water problem here in Santa Cruz. They wanna build a theme garden water and um, and and it must must uh, they really thought it was great because Bill Cooper thought it was an excellent presentation it's liking some aspects of the sea world experience uh, entertaining for kids um, BJ Atkins thought it was an excellent idea and um, one committee uh, member also uh, uh, proposed uh, an edu that it would be an education experience project with uh, Bill uh, Atkins, I uh, just think it's wonderful. But the problem is, it's gonna cost somewhere between 3.2 and 3.5 million dollars. And they could swing open as early as the end of next year. So this is money they have today. And the board uh, it says, oh man, we're, we're ready. We're ready to go do this. So uh, Katie Martin was excited for the potential of this plan. And it's gonna give visitors all this great information. Well, I, I, I don't know about you, but if they have enough money to build a theme park, why don't they accelerate recycled water in the valley and get rid of the 15% problem that they have? 
You know today, the city of Santa Clarita building all those medians down the center of the road? They brag about the fact that they put in purple pipe. Well, purple pipe is great, but it's not connected to anything, so it really doesn't help us a bit. But if uh, we spent this money in, uh, in, in accelerating the recycling program, put some, some pipes in the ground, well, then um, uh, it, it, it might help a lot more than what we've got. Uh, I think the solution is to vote Cooper, Atkins, and every other board member who votes for this project off the, off the water board. And uh, there's uh, some staff members. I can't even believe that Matt Stone is allowing this to happen. I'm going to go talk to him about it um, myself. Um, this was a, 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 an answer to the signal, ad, the signal article about it, and um, it was written by Betty Smith. And, and if you go on the website, you can see that she's also talking about the $14 million they said they were going to save by consolidating the water company. So if you have 14 million plus three and a half million, that should be enough to help us. But instead, uh, they should be providing us water and, and not deciding that they want to get in the theme park business. And as I said in my article, sell cotton candy. Uh, 